Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with Az Chats 83, where today I'm going to be discussing the developer live stream last night. So if you're a raider, prepare to get excited. And if you're a fan of MMORPGs, probably prepare to unsub. Right, okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to systematically go through the bullet points of the developer live stream. I'm going to use the notes that MMO Champ have nicely and concisely, that rhymes, uh, put together. Uh, so thank you, MMO Champ. Go visit the website. It's very good indeed. i got to say, though, I was a little worried at the start of the live dev stream because Ian Hazacostas was just stood there behind a backdrop, a World of Warcraft backdrop, looking pretty nervous, i got to say. And I was expecting a member of ISIS just to walk into shop and behead him. Uh, thankfully, that wasn't what it was there for. Uh, they were just trying something new and different uh, for the stream. It's a shame they couldn't try that with the content. But um... Um, right, okay, without further ado, and bad jokes, because I'm a dad, um, they called the patch Tides of Vengeance. Not very original. I mean, I did actually predict on the stream what they were going to call it, and I predicted that it was going to be called Something of Something. So I was pretty close, actually. I was pretty close. I'm pretty impressed with myself for that. Um, the, I don't think it's a particularly inspiring name. I'm not going to rag on this too much, but... The reason why is just a few years ago, we had the book Tides of War, which was about Jaina. This patch is meant to be about the Alliance uh, striking back and Jaina being at the forefront of that. So they called it Tides of something else. So you've had Tides of War and now you're going to have Tides of Vengeance. Now, I understand the logic, but the thing is, you had the Tides of War when you had the Garoshi stuff. But now Jaina has been broken and Jaina has been put back together. So instead of tides, you should have used a more aggressive, watery uh, metaphor like tsunami. Tsunami of destiny. Uh, tidal wave of white hair with a blonde streak. Something, I don't know. But yeah, okay, uh, whatever. That's, I spent way too much talking time talking about that. Um, they didn't give it a number though. They didn't say it's going to be 8.1. Nothing, I'm not reading anything into that, but they just didn't give it a number. So it's going to continue the Horde and the Alliance conflict, which as, the, as Ian said, may feel rather distant right now. Yeah, it feels rather distant right now, Ian, because you had this huge setup for the expansion and then 8.0 killed it. Killed it flat. Just killed it flat. It's like when you're on the sofa with a girl and, uh, you know, you've been sort of inching closer and closer and then the knees start touching and now the thighs have come together and you're just sort of like turning, reaching in for a kiss and then your gran walks in. Uh, hi, gran. Oh, what are you watching? Uh, uh, just watching Countdown, gran. Oh, that's nice. I like Countdown. I love Richard Whiteley. Can I just sit down and watch with you? Yeah, yeah, of course you can, Gran. Of course you can. Do you want to put the kettle on? I'm just real sorry about this. Do you want to put the kettle on? Make a cup of tea. That's what it, that's what eight point out felt like in the storyline, Blizz. You just you just got rid of the boner. You like okay. So apparently, um, this patch is meant to bring the boner back and ramp up the actual uh, purpose of the expansion. One patch in. Um, and they're hoping that it's going to be on the PTR by the end of this week. Okay. It's way too long about that. New content. This is the part that we really give a shit about. <laughs> so the war campaign is going to continue. I am looking forward to that because I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the, the Jaina Proudmore storyline. I thought it was great. Discovered... Um, that it wasn't Christy Golden that wrote it. It was actually Taron Gregory. Uh, he uh, he hit me up on Twitter with a, a thumbs up on the video. So Taron Gregory, well done. That Jane of Proudmore part in Just Far was stunning. Absolutely stunning. I hope the war campaign continues with the same level of quality uh, that it has so far. Because if it does, 
uh, there's going to be a really good story told in the war campaign. I'm not quite finished with the Horde one yet. I'm nearly there. Not quite there. Um, and so far, I've been really enjoying it. I've gone past the bit where uh, the Blood Trolls have tried to attack uh, Zaldazar and King Rastakan's made his bargain with Buswandi, who's awesome. Buswandi is just so cool. Um, so I have gone through that phase. I'm kind of like on to the next phase now. The seal's been broken and all that kind of jazz. So uh, the war campaign continues. Looking forward to that. It's been good stuff so far. Oh, dear. Incursions are coming. Uh, similar to Legion Assaults. Look, Ian actually described them exactly like Legion Assaults. He, he, he described them beat for beat. Uh, incursions are essentially legion invasions. Um, world quests will stop in that zone when incursion happens. This, to me, is just a call to arms. Just, that's it. World quests have stopped. People, don't fight them. Let the, just let the incursion be. Let them be. Let them, let them eat our women. Let them, uh, uh, sleep with our food. Uh, let them do whatever they want. Uh, just, just, we're going to have four hours or whatever it is of no world quests. Oh, man. Oh, just heaven. Just heaven. Just heaven. Um, so part of me really wants incursions to, uh, to just be there and, and nothing happens. But Ian described them exactly as Legion assaults. And this doesn't excite me in the slightest because all Ian has done here is basically say, hey, look, more Legion content. Brand new expansion. Brand new area, brand new theme, same old shit. And and so that doesn't excite me at all. Every expansion should have its own unique feel. Aesthetically, it does, because the art department are just gods. Content-wise, no. It's literally, the content is just cherry-picked from Legion. And most of it dubbed down as well. And so incursions, they're just going to feel exactly like Legion invasions... Uh, you go, you do the f certain amount of quests, and then you go off and you do like a little scenario bit to end it. Identical. I can't get excited about content that is identical. I really can't, Ian. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to come up with something different. And new world quests. Why? Why the threat? Why? Why the threat? Why? I, I pay for BFA, I pay my sub fee, in the past I, you know, I paid for character transfers, race ca transfers, trans transfers, uh, I, I've, I've paid you a lot of money, why threaten me? New world quests are coming, why threaten me? What did I do, why threaten me? That's just disgusting. Hey, I'll tell you what folks, Ian was so excited to talk about the new world quests, that in a 23, 24 minute dev live stream he spoke about them for eight seconds i'll let that sink in for a moment so excited eight seconds that he discussed jesus christ um storylines are going to continue with sarfang tarande and volgin um i've been doing the horde stuff and i i can't remember anything to do with volgin's spirit uh, maybe I flipped over. I, I have been doing a lot of the Horde stuff while live streaming, so maybe I missed it. Um, T Sarfang is, is just the best written character so far in the whole of the expansion. So I'm really looking forward to more Sarfang. He's currently in the Alliance uh, Stockades. I'd love to see where that goes. I'd love to see a kind of um, battle of wits between him and Anduin, because he's the chis chiseled veteran. Anduin is the is the green rookie in essence, and I think Anduin could learn a lot from Sarfang, uh, even if it's just honor and and the way that you hold yourself and dignity and morality and things like that. And and Anduin's got a pretty strong sense of that, but to see it reaffirmed in his enemy, uh, I think would be very good. But I mean, I'm just writing my own fanfic here, but you know whatever. Uh, Tarande. Mm. Look, um, full disclosure, the Alliance, we really don't like her. She's, uh, she's, she's been a really badly written character. Malfurion, my love! That's all she says. And then she just acts like a complete word, which I can't say. A B. A complete B. 
You're not allowed to say that when it comes to women anymore. But she's fictional and it's true. Um, so I really hope that they um, they they actually get some proper writing behind her because uh, so far she's really unlikable. And right now I'm just hankering for a member of the Horde to cut her head off. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't care. So try something cool. Um, Heritage Armour is going to come in, but for existing races, Dwarves and Blood Elves, existing races, they're going to get Heritage Armour, and it's actually going to be unlocked via a racist quest. Racial, racial quest, sorry. I thought that was a bit weird. I thought I, was, I read that, I thought that's a bit weird. It's not very PC, Blizz. Uh, sorry, racial quest. So, um, I think this is how Heritage Armour really should be. I think this leveling up business is, is horrendous. It's burning people out. It's, it's actually making people just, just never want to see Heritage Armour again in their lives. Um, I think this is the perfect way to get Heritage Armour. Get them something cool. Learn about the history uh, of, the, of the race. And with allied races, particularly things like Void Elves, we saw what happened with Illyria. But really, we wanted to see the story of what made the elves that follow her succumb to the void what made them sacrifice themselves to the void you know and that would have been quite an interesting story you know and it would have shown illyria uh, in a good light because it would have shown illyria as a powerful leader as, as somebody that could inspire yada 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 as opposed to somebody who's pretty vanilla um right now <laughs> not thankfully as vanilla as torelli as vanilla as torellian i have a loud deep voice and my deep voice is going to talk to you in a deep voice. Well done, Torellian. Well done. Great personality there, dude. Um, so, yeah, I, this is the way that I think Heritage Armour should go. Give them a nice quest. Learn about the history of them. Uh, use this as a great lore-telling device. I think it's perfect. Uh, looking forward to that. And the, the picture of the dwarf Heritage Armour, which I'm not putting up because I actually want to push you to go to MMO Champ because I've nicked the notes from them. I want, to go, I want you to go to MMO Champ and check it out. The Dwarven Heritage Armour, at least the concept for it, looks brilliant. Looks boss. Looks absolutely boss. So if you're a Dwarf, go check it out. I think you'd be very happy. I don't think they showed anything, however, for the uh, Blood Elves. Uh, new Warfront. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come. Okay, enough of that. Um, oh, my lord. The battle for Darkshore between the Night Elves and the Forsaken. With new structures and new upgrades. Um, apparently, the, um, the story behind this war front <laughs> is that uh, the Night Elves want to reclaim their ancestral land. Uh, full disclosure, it's burnt. It's burnt down. Where are you going to sleep? On the beaches? I don't know. Wet and w MTV, Wet and Wild, Night Elf Edition, and you just, you know, wet t-shirts competitions on the beach. I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is uh, how do you pick up hot Night Elf chicks? Huh? 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 <laughs> With a dustpan and brush. Um, yeah, I, 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 look, I can't get excited about Warfronts. The garbage. The absolute garbage, Blizz. Um, terrible. They're just terrible. And I don't see how these are going to be any different. I don't see how Blizzard could have made any uh, adjustments in concept of them so early on. Uh, they didn't bother doing anything with the feedback from Alpha. So why would they bother now? Uh, so a new Warfront's coming and that's just depressing. So all in all, the story stuff looks good. Yeah, the Heritage Armour stuff looks good. Um, the content, the actual physical content, World Quest, Incursions, Warfront. Oh, just... Oh. Terrible. Soul-destroying. Soul-destroying. Okay, next up. Let's push this along a bit. I know it's an ass chats, but push, push, push. Um... Island Expeditions, uh, two new islands, uh, Yorndaro, which is going to be a Vrykul area, and Haven's Wood, uh, I really, Blizz, I know this is a wee small thing, please can you just change the name to spell like our beautiful friend Frederick who passed away, uh, Haven Games, can you spell it like Haven from Haven Games, please, please, that would be just a lovely, subtle nod to him. 
that's just my own per sorry get emotional um so Havenswood, which is a gilnean city uh type of uh island expedition i'm going to give blizzard the benefit of the doubt on this and reserve judgment that's the nicest thing i can say um they're saying they're going to bring new events new enemies and more variety that could you know that is just pie in the sky that can mean anything uh holdouts which can be triggered they didn't sound very interesting it sounded like a horde mode and quite a boring horde mode and uh, as right extraction points well that's what they essentially the same thing um they'll have improved spawning um won't be uniformly blanketed by spawns uh, and more cl uh, clusters of hubs and gaps between them so look i'm gonna reserve judgment on the island expedition stuff because it's something i think that needs to be tested uh, to legitimately see how how it's changed and if it's any better i was really looking forward to island expeditions in bfa i did three or four on the beta and i thought that'll be enough you know i don't want to burn myself out on these i don't want to do too many that'll be enough and i'll look forward to them on live unfortunately on live they basically just turned them into a an artifact power grind and so that sapped a lot of the enjoyment out of them and I think I've done 20 plus, 20 odd island expeditions now. One pet. One pet. 19. Wah, wah. And on the last couple, I got a quest. I got like a spear and it's like, you've unlocked a quest. And I was all excited. Take this spear to Crassarang Wilds. So I was like, awesome. Is this, I hand it in. I get a little quest. I get, I get the mount at the end of it. You know, maybe. I was all excited. I went to Crassarang Wilds, handed it to a Jinyan. And they went, oh, this is the spear of our ancestors. Here, have some artifact power on the floor. And he literally threw it at me. Just fucking hit me in the, ah, hit me in the face. Ah, ah, take your artifact power and piss off. So um, pretty uninspiring quest there. So uh, yeah, I think the expeditions have really <sighs> let me down in BFA, sadly. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt for this and uh we'll see what happens let's get to the good stuff if you're a raider hey hey because that's all wow seems to give a shit about nowadays um there's gonna be two raids that are coming first one is called siege of zuldazar why blizz <sighs> why couldn't you have just changed the word siege we've already had a siege of orgrimmar right um, we've had the Siege of the Undercity when Wrathgate happened. Uh, that wasn't a raid, but it was a, you know. Wh why could it just call it something like the Sacking? The Sacking of Zuldazar. You know? And, and given it a, 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 just a slight change. Siege of Zuldazar, Siege of Orgrimmar. It's just like, there's no ideas. You know, you can't even think of new names for stuff. I know some people might think this is quite petty, but I think it's quite important. Because when you see the content just being rehash legion stuff hey incursions which are just um invasions world quests which are world quests uh ap grind which is ap grind you know it just seems like there's no ideas there and so just why just the sacking of zordazar i think it, it would think it would be much better and be much more impactful but that's just the name again some people be like wow um but it sounds good. It's a different experience for the Horde and the Alliance. The Alliance start at the docks and they have to fight their way up to the main area where King Rastakan is. And then that is where their raid will end for now. And then the Horde um, fight their way from the other side, from the north side, with the Alliance being at the south, into the city. They'll go to the Rastakan fight halfway through their raid and then they'll fight the alliance down back down to the docks where they'll their final fight will actually be against jane of proudmore i don't imagine jane is going to die at all but i'm telling you right now blizzard if the horde killed jaina we're done we're done we're done we're packing up we're going home we're packing up we're going home alliance alliance are you with me yeah we're packing up we're going home bye uh but i, I don't imagine that's gonna happen and then what happens is when your raid comes to an end after six bosses, you speak um, to an NPC 
and they tell you the story of the other um, factions uh, raid. And so you get to do the three bosses that the other uh, faction did that you didn't do. And so the raid turns into a nine boss raid. They're, that is some good ideas. Why can't they put these sort of ideas into, you know, this sort of creativity into to outside world stuff? I, I don't know. But it sounds really good. It sounds uh, very interesting. Uh, I like the concept of it. I like the idea of it. Um, so raiders, yeah. So ultimately, I think you will all do the same nine bosses. But you will have a different experience when you do it. What I will say is though, I don't know how that is going to affect like the mythic race. I mean, the myth the, the mythic race is already so heavily favoured to the horde right now. And a lot of it is meant to be because of the horde racials. And if that is the case, Blizzard, just get rid of racials, please. Just get rid of them. If the tipping if you've only got two like four I think there's like four alliance in the top forty. It's pathetic, Blizzard. That needs to be looked at. Um but what happens if the, the bosses that the Horde do first are easier than the Alliance? I mean, you could say it might ultimately balance itself out, but, um, you know, or harder. What if they're harder and the, the Horde struggle while the Alliance, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But it, it might. It might have a, a small. It might have a small impact on. Um, just realized my phone was on mute. Uh, it might have a small impact. But yeah, by the way. And then they said much after the uh, siege, the sacking, I'm going to screw it. I'm, I'm, I'm changing the name. Uh, after the sacking of Zaldazar, um, there's going to be a second raid called the Crucible of Storms, which is going to be set underneath Stormsong Valley. Just a two boss raid. And it's going to have old god connotations. It's going to have Ashara connotations. We already know that Ashara is going to be the main boss in patch 8.2. Blizzard said that. At BlizzCon last year. Uh, so that isn't exactly a secret. Um, so yeah, should be some old god related stuff. And it should be some um, Ashara related stuff. Sounds good. Sounds good. So if you're a raider, uh, this new content patch looks like it's uh, it's going to be good stuff for you. Some sift system improvements are coming in. I'm going to bang through this because there's really not too much exciting things to be said here. Um, there's going to be some class updates and tweaks and changes. Azerite tra traits are going to be changed, got rid of, new ones come in, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. A gnome Reagan pet battle dungeon. Pet battle enthusiasts, I can only imagine you're going to be happy with that. I try, I did the pet battle Wailing Caverns dungeon. I actually started eating anthrax halfway through that. I needed, I just needed life to be over. I was like Sherbert, just like Sherbert. Oh, oh, and I, for some reason, I didn't die. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, Pet Battle Dungeons are... Uh, um, the Azerite traits, yeah. Uh, they're going to do some changes to reputation achievements. Who, ca who, ca who cares? Um, Champions of Azeroth rep is effectively... Effectively going to go uh, account-wide. Which is going to help for your alts. And, and there's also something about... Uh, yeah, the Colterian and the Zandalari allied races. They're not ready yet, Bliss said. Um, after the sacking of Zaldazar... Uh, after the sacking of Zaldazar... Um, that, uh, then you would like... Uh, Made yourself worthy to the Zandalar. Then you'll fully make yourself worthy to the Zandalari or to the Kulturians. And then they will uh, join you as uh, allied races. Um, so, yeah, that is pretty much it. That is pretty much it. So when Ian stopped there and everybody was uh, waiting for the Q&A to start, he just said, Bye! 20, 23 minutes. In, out, put the kettle on. 23 minutes. Eight seconds he spoke about World Quest. Eight seconds. Ian, Ian telling it how it is with World Quest. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. They're awful. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, ultimately, if you're a raider, this is good stuff. It looks like raiding is going to be fun. Uh, it looks like it's going to be an interesting new experience. And there's going to be two two different raids to get yourself stuck into during the course of that patch. If you are anything but a raider, it's looking dire. Just rehashed Legion stuff. With, uh, with just no real progression. Just no longevity. World Quest people are bored. Why would they do world quests? Are you bringing in new reps? Because that's the only reason why they'll do them. Do you think they're going to do world quests for shits and giggles? I don't think so. People are sick of them. Um, your alts can use the incursion points to level up. That'll help. But yeah, if you're not a raider, it's it's looking so bad. So bad. So uh, a right mix with yesterday, a right mix with yesterday. It's kind of like if you if you don't raid, just just leave the game, just leave. There's nothing here for you. There, there's there's nothing here for you, which is which is quite sad and quite depressing. Uh, hopefully island expeditions. I'll give them a crack on the PTR. Let's see if they are any different. Let's see if they are any better. But they need to like completely change the reward system. They need those doubloons to. Um, to actually become vendor currency. Uh, make them become vendor currency. And so you can actually buy stuff. Buy mounts. Buy pets. Buy transmog. You know? Instead of this, this stupid RNG crud at the end. Uh, put people in charge of their own destiny with island expeditions. You know? Let them farm them. Let them get some currency. Let them buy some stuff. Come on. Um... But yeah, I'd be interested to see what you guys and gals think in the comment section down below. So I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming links. They're in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now. Just realized I totally never put my light on the whole video.